hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to continue looking at limits that result in indeterminate form and talk about methods for computing limits analytically using trig properties. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so we're going to start by identifying three trig limits that you should know. We will actually prove this third one is true on the next little part of this video, but I'm going to just tell you these so that you can make sure you get them written down and you can use them as fact. So first limit, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x is equal to 1. This is something that you should know. Next up, the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine of x over x is equal to 0. And lastly, number three, which we will prove in just a minute, is the limit as x approaches zero of tangent of x over x is one. Now, I understand that if you try to evaluate each of these limits using direct substitution, you're going to end up with zero over zero, which is undefined. So remember that just because something results in indeterminate form doesn't mean that the limit doesn't exist. It means that we need to be able to approach that limit in a different way. If you want to convince yourself that these three limit statements are true, what you could actually do is graph the function sine of x over x or graph the function 1 minus cosine of x over x or tangent of x over x. Type them into Desmos and graph them and zoom in close to zero and what you're going to see is a hole in the graph. So now that we know these three basic trig limits, look, let's go ahead and talk about how we can use them to help us in circumstances where we have a limit resulting in indeterminate form. All right, so if we look at number one, there's really just a scalar here, and we already talked about limit properties that allow us to move that scalar out in front. So this is really exactly the same thing as three times the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x over x, and we just said that this limit is equal to one. So the limit as x approaches zero, let me clean this up, there we go, of 3 sine of x over x is equal to 3. Okay, so I know we just said that this limit is equal to 1 on the slide before this, but let's go ahead and do a proof of this. So let's use what we know about sine, cosine, and tangent. So this limit is really going to be equal to the limit as x approaches 0, and I'm going to rewrite tangent of x as sine of x over cosine of x. And then I still have this extra x in the denominator, so I'm going to write that as 1 over x. And now I'm going to regroup this so that I have sine of x over x together and 1 over cosine of x together. Now we know that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x is 1, so this whole thing is going to be 1. We're going to multiply that by the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine of x. Well, we can use direct substitution with 1 over cosine of x because cosine of 0 is 1. So this limit is going to be 1 over 1, or just 1. So we proved that property that we were talking about, this property here, on the previous examples. All right, the next one, number two down here, is the sneakiest, in my opinion. And what we're seeing is we have something that looks like, it looks like this property here, but there's this extra three inside. If there's an extra number, and we're taking sine of 5x or 3x or 12x, in order to use the property that we have talked about, we need to have a three I'm going to do that part in red. We need to have a 3 in the denominator. That will allow this whole identity or this whole limit to be 1. Well, I can't just put a 3 in the denominator because I feel like it. In order to do that, I need to also put a 3 in the numerator. And I'm going to go ahead and move that 3 out in front. So this is 3 times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 3x over 3x. And you have to show this step. You can't just pry the 3 away from the x, that's not how math works. That's like taking an argument away. We can't do that. But we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3 over 3 so that we can get to our final answer that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 3x over x is 3. So you absolutely have to show that change in the scalar that's happening here if you want to receive full credit for your work. 
All right, I'm gonna encourage you actually to pause the video and see if you can work through this example here on your own, thinking about what you know about sine, cosine, and tangent, and thinking about the properties that we have already been using. All right, hopefully you had time to give this a shot on your own. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna leave sine of x and x squared alone, and I'm gonna take tangent, and I'm gonna rewrite tangent as sine of x over cosine of x. Then I'm gonna go ahead and regroup these. The limit as x approaches zero of sine of x over x, there's one x, and here's the second x and the second sine, and then I wanna make sure I don't leave off my one over cosine. So I'm just rearranging this so that I can use those limit properties. This limit is one, this limit is one, now I can use direct substitution on this last limit and get one there as well. So the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x tangent of x, over x squared is equal to one. So all the things that we already came into this class knowing about trig, those things still apply, and we wanna use those things to benefit us. The main ones are these three limits, and then of course that sine over cosine is tangent, and cosine over sine is cotangent. But let's look at some more examples, and then let's wrap up. All right, here are six more examples. I'm gonna encourage you to pause the video and maybe pick two or three that you think you can do on your own. If you can do more than that, that's excellent. But see how far you can get and then unpause the video and see how you did. All right, hopefully you had time to work through that. Number one, we can actually just solve with direct substitution. If I plug in pi over six, I'm just gonna get sine of pi over six minus pi over three which is the same thing as sine of negative pi over six, which is this angle right here, and the y coordinate of that point is gonna be negative one half. So the limit as x approaches pi over six of sine of x minus pi over three is equal to negative one half. For number two, similarly, we can actually use direct substitution here as well. So the limit as x appro approaches pi over two of cosine of two x, all of this is gonna be put to the fourth power. I just wanna point out that cosine of two times pi over two, that's cosine of pi, which is negative one. So the limit part is just gonna become negative one, and we're gonna raise that to the fourth power. And if I raise negative one to the fourth power, I get one. And then I'm out of space, but we should rewrite that limit statement there as well. Number three, we learned a property that says the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine of x over x. So really all we need to do to use that property is move the five out. So I'm gonna take one fifth times the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine of x over x. That limit we learned is zero. And if I multiply zero by one fifth, I also get zero. So the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine of x over five x is equal to zero. For number four, I'm going to rewrite this, or actually I'm going to just identify the sine of x over x, that limit is just going to be equal to one. That's going to leave me with the limit as x approaches zero of one over cosine of x, which is one. So the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x over x cosine of x is going to be equal to one. Another way you could do this exact same problem is you could say that sine over cosine is tangent. So you could actually rewrite this as the limit as x approaches zero of tangent of x over x, which we actually did already. And we showed that that is one. So just the way that your brain goes with trig, follow it. Okay. Five and six, I'm gonna just put the solutions up for you to check over. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and check out number five. I'm actually gonna work through number six with you because it's a little trickier. So the first thing that I did was I changed tangent of x to sine of x over cosine of x. Now I'm gonna take that numerator and I'm gonna find a common denominator. So I'm gonna turn this one into cosine x over cosine x, and I'm gonna combine this fraction. So this is gonna be equal to the limit as x approaches pi over four of cosine of x minus sine of x over cosine of x. And this whole thing is being divided by sine of x minus cosine of x. Now, the easiest way to see this, and I'm gonna give us a little bit more space, 
there we go, is to rewrite this using old school division. Let me do that real fast. Now we can multiply by the reciprocal here, which is gonna actually make these two things divide out. And since they're opposite, cosine minus sine versus sine minus cosine, that's gonna become negative one. So the limit as x approaches pi over four of negative one over cosine of x. And then I can use direct substitution or I could change that to secant first, whatever's easier for you. This is gonna end up giving me negative root two or it would give you negative root two over two, which when you simplify that is gonna give you negative root two. All right, the last thing we're gonna talk about in this video is the squeeze theorem, and then we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. All right, the squeeze theorem is a theorem that basically says if we can show that a limit must be trapped between two limits, and then if we can show that these two things are the same, we can actually find the exact value of a particular limit. Now this is one of those extension things. It's great for you to understand it, but you're not going to be expected to be using the squeeze theorem in this way in this particular course. So let's do just one example and then wrap up. If I'm trying to figure out what this limit is, I'm going to go ahead and start by identifying that I know that sine Actually, let's give myself some more room over here. I know that sine of 1 over x, or sine of x in general, has to be between 1 and negative 1. Sine oscillates between 1 and negative 1, so sine of 1 over x is going to do that as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply all three sides by x squared. So I'm going to have an x squared on each part now, because I'm trying to make it look like this. Now, the only difference is that I need a limit. So I'm gonna take the limit as x approaches zero of negative x squared. That will still be equal to the limit as x approaches zero of x squared times sine of one over x will be less than or equal to the limit as x approaches zero of x squared. Well, what is the limit as x approaches zero of x squared? It's zero. And what is the limit as x approaches zero of negative x squared? We can just use direct substitution on both of those to get zero. So we're saying that the limit as x approaches zero of x squared times sine of one over x has to be some number between zero and zero. That means that this statement must be true. The limit as x approaches zero of x squared times sine of one over x must be equal to zero. So that's how the squeeze theorem works. It allows us to make a statement with inequalities to prove something about the value in the middle. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Our goal in this video was to be able to evaluate limits analytically using trig. So we learned those three basic properties. We applied them in a bunch of different situations. And then we wrapped up by extending our idea, pushing ourselves a little bit, and looking at the squeeze theorem. So go ahead and write down any questions you have, and I look forward to supporting you on this. Thanks for listening.